we are trying to rebuild our country. We're trying to rebuild perception. When it comes to our economy, when it comes to tourism, we want people to have trust in us again. And it starts with our African counterparts before we even extend it to the world and the Paris Club and all of that. What would you say as advice um, in terms of rebranding as a country that also had to go through it, where people say, can I visit Rwanda? Is it safe? Um, what would I get out of it? What would you say for Zimbabwe? Because you have commented at time, even you visiting our country is support, and we appreciate that. What would you say we need to work on to um, position ourselves in a place where we still can attract the tourists we need, we can still get the FDI we need and the support that we need to rebuild 37 years later? Yeah, uh, perception uh, will be there. You can't avoid it. Uh, we that is something we, we, we share with the many people we, we, um, and, and, and mainly it is this perception that actually portrays you in a way that you may not be. Uh, by the way, we still suffer from that ourselves. There are still many who wonder, who don't even fully believe or don't know that the country has changed. The moment you mentioned Rwanda, there are those who still think it is 94, or the situation after that. At this moment, we still have that. Or, it's very interesting, there are those who have even been here, who have seen uh, what is here, who can even uh, compare what is now and what was in the past. And they still say, is this real? Isn't there something uh, underneath? Uh, you know, there is always that. There is always, you know, drawing, you know, being drawn to the negative, and so. Uh, explaining your point of Zimbabwe, where I'm using my own example, we know that that is there. So we don't be discouraged by it. Just be educated by it. And the first point you get educated about is, you know, you need to work hard to change the perception. You can't bribe your way through. You can't just uh, switch talk, you know, some people and things, and even if they say, okay, we agree with you, and you think things will be fine. No. You keep doing your best. You keep, if these, of course, countries are governed the way you govern, the different institutions, the way they operate, the way the people of your own country feel about what is happening, will always come out. And before you even convince anybody from outside, so that they don't have a uh, wrong perception about you. Convince your own people. Make sure they are with you in saying, no, no, look, whatever you are saying, we feel there is a change. Uh, so concentrate there. Concentrate on making sure that your people are involved, they are benefiting, they, are, they can themselves push back on this story of the wrong perception. But that means also that it is going to be built on tangible things. Yes. Uh, you know, if the country is hungry, people have nothing to eat. Uh, they will tell people that they have nothing to eat. <laughs> and, and so when the outsiders are saying it, don't go against them and say, no, why are you saying that my country is starving? When, when actually people are starving, they are starving. So, and they have, but if you tell me, if you, the outside say, no, no, the country, the people of Rwanda are actually starving, when the people of Rwanda are saying, no, we are not starving, I won't even have any fight with you saying that the country is starving. I just ignore you and keep. Eventually, you will get tired of uh, 
telling wrong stories about me because my people will be there to disprove me. And it is what matters anyway. Yes. The problems they have, well, like any other country, cannot be resolved overnight. Certain things have got to be done by the Zimbabweans themselves. Well, they've got to do these things in a certain way. So that, that still that falls on the shoulders of the Zimbabweans. And to prove that point, they are going to do it and they are going to change. So for us, it is to say, we can be with you and work with you and share whatever we can from outside. But it's, it's a responsibility of Zimbabweans as it has been uh, of Rwandans when it comes to Rwanda and it is with others, no question about it. Then the third was to say, give them time or even allow them the tools, you know? If you are saying, no, we want you to change, you know, okay, we save time, but at the same time, they are under sanctions. So and when you are under sanctions, you are being denied the tools to apply to actually change the situation. So you can't be the same person who has applied the sanctions, and then you say, I want you to change in a very short time. When part of the change requires what actually is sanctioned. <laughs> so it doesn't make, there's no sense in that. So this is what plays out there in, in the arguments that outside there, which all of us uh, can contribute to one or the other, but the Zimbabweans are irreplaceable in dealing with their own countries, yes. And it has to be practical. I hope all of us understand even for us is we want to show the results. We, we don't want anybody to give us credit for nothing. Yes, we want to do something and convince our own people later on, convince these outsiders who or sometimes who will never be convinced. Yes, but at the moment you are with your people, it's a damn deal. <laughs>